why it would seem um, as though TV dramas and soap operas are not as popular as it was in the 80s or early 90s, I think is because generally the world has become, um, I don't know how to say it now, the world has become a smaller place. Back in the day when Checkmate, you know, was big, when Mirror in the Sun was big and, you know, the streets were basically empty out when <laughs> the shows were on and you could hear like the theme song, you know, resonate all through the street and it's the same thing everybody's watching. I think basically the world was, the world was, uh, we had, we didn't have a lot. The industry was small. The industry was just beginning. There were just a few people who were doing these things. Right now, if you turn on the TV, for instance, we have so many local channels. We have so many cable channels. We have so many satellite cable providers as well. So, I mean, everybody's not watching the same thing at the same time. There are several soap operas, there are several sitcoms, there are several dramas. So it's very, very difficult for one to become that popular or to become what everybody is watching. Back then we had just NTA and LTV, probably you could probably count maybe just about five or, or six or seven TV channels. And they usually come on about four. You know, the, the time was limited. So whenever the TV channels came on, everybody was watching if you're not at work. And it was just one or two dramas that were on air. So I wouldn't attribute um, one soap not being as popular as the ones back in the day to them being not as good but because there are a lot more and you know people have a wider variety of, of shows to watch and to follow but then it doesn't mean that the few ones that stand out still don't stand out I mean in as much as we have several channels if you still mention Tinsel people will still say hey. if you still say Hotel Majestic you know people will still talk and the same way if you mention some People are clueless, like, okay, which one is that, you know? So the, the, the very good ones that stand out still stand out, and the other ones are still there. But the advantage of the Checkmates and Co, apart from the fact that they were really good, was that we didn't have as many back then. We didn't have as many channels, as many dramas. For me, I'm really not worried about um, distinguishing my work from other people's work. I just go ahead and do my thing. If I feel at this point in time, this is a story I want to tell, I go ahead and tell it. I don't you know, care if it goes with what people are doing or what people are not doing, or if I want it to stand out. I don't necessarily you know, aim to stand out. I just, it's a, it's a burning desire, a burning passion, and I say this must be done, then it must be done. Um, I'm currently in post-production of a short film I just shot. It's called Ereti. It is the story of a woman, um, so to speak, in, in jail, who is trying to get out. You know, it's basically a story of self-realization, self-awareness, self-freedom, self-emancipation. And before I shot Ereti, I had said last year that, you know, I wasn't going to shoot another short film in a while. I want to face the series, I want to face the feature, I want to face all that. But then it just came, you know, I was just sitting down and it was a story that had to be told and I could not sleep, you know, until I sat and wrote it. I was like, I'm shooting this, I'm, you know, so it, it, it comes like that. It's just what I feel within my consciousness as this story must be told, this must be released, this must go out. And that's how I do my work. I, I don't work as if there's anyone else, you know, watching or anyone else to compare myself with. I do what I do and that's it.